Do you find it challenging to capture good quality photos in low light conditions? Are you afraid of setting your ISO too high, resulting in noisy images? In this video, I'll explain how professional photographers overcome these challenges by sharing the camera settings and techniques they use to maximize image quality. You can easily apply these techniques to your own photography to capture high quality photographs as well. Later on, I'll share my trusted editing workflow, resulting in incredibly clean and sharp results. Welcome to the channel, everyone. My my name is Mark Dumbleton and I'm a professional wildlife photographer from South Africa. I publish videos every Sunday about all things relating to wildlife photography. So if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Before diving into the pro tips, let's quickly understand ISO and noise and their impact on our photos. The aperture of your lens and the shutter speed adjusts the amount of light entering the camera sensor, while ISO controls the sensitivity of the sensor itself, much like adjusting the volume on an amplifier or speaker. Low ISO settings result in less noise, whereas high ISO settings can introduce significant noise, detracting from image quality by reducing dynamic range, sharpness, and introducing graininess. Image noise appears in two ways, as color noise and luminance noise. I won't go into the technical specifics of these noise types, just understand that color noise appears as random colorful specks across an image, while luminance noise essentially creates a grainy appearance throughout the image image. So how can we create amazing images in low light? I can't stress the importance of the first camera setting you need to use enough. It has such a significant impact on image quality, bigger than anything I'm going to mention in this video. This setting allows you to capture every bit of detail from the camera sensor and allows for a larger latitude when editing the image. It's non-negotiable in my books. Shoot in RAW. Don't even consider using JPEG. As a matter of interest, don't expect anything from the in-camera high ISO noise reduction setting. This doesn't affect RAW files in any way. Certain types of camera equipment can make a significant difference to the overall image quality. And although I don't like advising photographers to buy new gear, it's worth mentioning here if you already own such equipment. Modern full frame sensors like those found in cameras such as the Nikon Z8 or Sony A1 for example, render cleaner images under low light and high ISO conditions than smaller sensor cameras like APS-C or Micro micro four thirds. Also lenses with larger apertures such as f2.8 allow in more light than a lens with the largest maximum aperture of f6.3. Allowing in more light using a wide aperture will result in cleaner images. A wide aperture lens will also enable the camera to focus better as it has more light to calculate focus with. Talking about focusing, I often use single point autofocus in challenging low light conditions. I find that assigning a single point for the camera to use can often produce more accurate results compared to relying on subject detection or auto area AF modes. Focusing in low light can be challenging, but providing a good point with a good contrast or detail for your camera to focus on will help achieve more accurate results than providing an area with low contrast or low detail to focus on. Now, moving on to the most important part of achieving great image quality, exposing the image. To expose a photograph correctly, we need to consider three settings, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Balancing these three settings is key. As a side note, I generally use matrix or evaluative metering modes for ambient light situations or the center weighted metering mode for artificial light. To start with, I would immediately use the widest aperture possible on the lens to allow the most light to enter. Then find a shutter speed that will render the subject sharp without being unnecessarily fast. This will depend a lot on the size of the subject and whether it's moving and at what speed. To complete the exposure, we need to set the ISO speed. I suggest using auto ISO here and let the camera determine the best ISO setting required. The most crucial setting here is your shutter speed. If you use a shutter speed that is too fast, the camera will have to use a very high ISO to properly expose the photo. Conversely, if you use a shutter speed that is too slow, the image may be blurry and unusable. Find the right balance between ISO and shutter speed. Getting the exposure right is key and you can't afford to underexpose the photo. Doing so will lead to more noise when you increase the exposure in post-processing. As always, use vibration reduction or image stabilization in camera or on the lens and ensure adequate support to eliminate camera shake. In many reserves in Africa, lodges 
and photographic hides allow the use of artificial lighting, providing opportunities for photography even in complete darkness. I don't find the results from flash photography great when it comes to wildlife, so I don't recommend using flash. However, I am a great fan of using spotlights, especially when they are positioned from the side or back. Using artificial light can produce incredible effects and I highly recommend taking advantage of this opportunity if possible. After capturing the photograph, the next important step is editing and I have something very interesting to show you here. There are two schools of thought. Embrace the noise for artistic merit or remove the noise for ultimate image quality. If you prefer to keep the noise, converting the image to black and white can often create a very filmic aesthetic. However, I understand that most of you may want to remove the noise for a cleaner result. So this is what I suggest you do. I often prefer the simpler route when reducing noise. Although the Topaz range of AI software can produce amazing results, which I will showcase in a future video, I typically use AID noise in Lightroom. To remove noise from your photo, simply click the Denoise button under the detail panel and choose a setting from zero to 100. On the screen now is a list of denoise amounts I use relative to the ISO so settings used to take the photo. The AI denoise in Lightroom effectively eliminates color and luminance noise very well, but it's important to find a balance between noise reduction and preserving details. Once you're happy with the setting applied, hit the enhance button to run the noise reduction, creating a new DNG raw file in the process. There are, however, issues with the way Lightroom implements AI denoise, and I outline those issues in this video here. I highly recommend familiarizing yourself with these issues before editing another photo in Lightroom. 